Hey, in this video, we're going to take a look at Platformly, platform.ly. It's a comprehensive tool. We're going to really dive into the marketing automation aspects of it. So stay tuned for this one. Hey everybody, this is David with TechSmart Boss here with another video. And today I'm going to take a look at this a platform called Platformly, platform.ly. Now Platformly, I, I've talked about this on my podcast before. We I use this uh, internally. I focus on the marketing automation piece of it, but it can do so much more. So I'm going to try to cover as much as I can in this video, but I will say that I really do like the marketing automation piece of this, and I love their integrations. But you can kind of see here, they've got dashboards, they've got link tracking, they've got lead capture, email marketing, everything in here. They've got some nice integration with Stripe and other payment methods where you can start to see the complete picture uh, if you're in an e-commerce space or like me, I'm in a software as a service space, you can see it there as well. I'll tell you what I really like about them as well is the integrations and these have been expanding. But Zapier, I use Zapier extensively with Platformly, but they've been getting a lot of great new ones like Convertful. And you know how much I think about uh, Convertful. That's a big one for me. Convert Box, which is another great one. And, and, and the list just goes on and on. So what I'm going to do, let's go through their onboarding and set up a, a brand new account so just so you could take a peek on the inside and you can see here try for free actually before I even do that let's take a look at pricing I won't spend too much time on pricing but one thing I will mention is very it's very customizable you can see you can start really small with a small contact base you can pick your features here in terms of integrations and dashboards and emails and things like that and they even have other things like the sales reporting. I mentioned that integration with payment gateways and things like that. So if you don't need everything, you don't have to pay for everything. And, you know, I always like that kind of a la carte type of, of pricing model. All right, let's go ahead and go through their onboarding here. Try it for free, a free trial uh, with the TechSmart Boss account. And we'll, we're going to go ahead and start. We're going to pick small because we are. And I'm just going to start with the with the starter here but you'll notice that I can do a 15 day trial now I'm sure you can adjust all these once you're in the trial um, and uh, you'll see the big difference between the starter and the growth other than your quantities web hooks which I really like uh, I use Zapier mostly if I didn't use Zapier I would be doing a lot of web hook things but let's go ahead and start this uh, free trial here and give them our name and our email says step one of two. Let's see what step number two is going to be. And they want to know where we are located. So now this will um, put a credit card in. I, I'm suspecting here. Let's see if they actually ask for the credit card next. Um, let's see. All right. So, yep. So it's not a credit card uh, free trial which you know I, I like more than anything but I'll tell you what I do in situations like that I use privacy.com so if you're not familiar with them go out and, and this is US based only so unfortunately it won't work for you I don't think if you're not in the US but this allows me to create as many virtual credit cards as I want and I could set limits and and all sorts of things so that if you do cancel a trial you can make sure that they don't go in and charge you. What I'm going to do is pause this video. I'm going to go ahead and set me up a little privacy card on this one so I can get past this um, this trial gate. Hold on one second. All right, so I just put that card in. Um, safe from being charged inappropriately if I don't like their trial, but if I do like their trial, and in this case, I know I like Platformly, um, you just go ahead and continue. Let's go ahead and fill out company name. And company domain, I will say, and, and, and I'm not sure if they've changed this, but once you set this, you can't change it. Maybe you can if you contact support, but there's nothing in the interface that would allow you to change the company subdomain. I'm sure if you contact support, they might be able to help you. But a lot of things are tied around this domain. So you want to you wanna pick one that's correct. It really doesn't, nobody sees this. I mean, you, you have custom domains and links throughout where you, you see name your valid domains. But just a FYI, pick something appropriate. You don't want to um, pick anything crazy there. Let's go ahead and hit enter. And it wants some more information. Let's see how, well, I'll go ahead and uh, pause this again. 
and go ahead and put uh, some 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 more details here. One second. Okay, I'm back. Let's go ahead and give it a username and oh, spell that right and a password. So a lot of information here on the trial. Hopefully they're going to use all that address information and send me a free shirt or something. I'm not sure why they would need it otherwise. And let's go ahead and say we build a SaaS and that expands. And what do we want to do? Now this is valuable. Anytime a new company, this is helping them know who their customer base would be, who their target audience uh, you know, is and things like that. So, you know, fill it out. This helps this helps your companies get better, especially when they're small. All right, let's uh up. Oh, I've got some fields missing. You know, I did not put that mobile phone. Is that the only thing that it could be possibly complaining about? I'll just go ahead and put the same Google voice number twice. So, you know, not a real number there. Uh, again, you a tech smart boss ha you have to have all these little tricks to to uh get there. All right, I'm in. So, a lot of steps there to get started, but now that I'm started, you'll see that they've got some onboarding videos and I'm going to I'm going to see if I can skip through some of these. But one of the key things that I like about Platformly is they they let you use their own email. So a lot of those email limits that they that they talked about on that pricing page is going through their servers. And they have pretty they really focus on that. They've got good deliverability. I've been really happy with the default Platformly uh, sender. But then you can also add in as many custom senders as you want. So I've got it hooked up. You can hook it up through SendGrid, through AWS, hook it up through your, your G Suite. You can you can start to send mails outside of that. And that's what I really like about their, their marketing automation and their email marketing is you're not just stuck with their default option, but you can go through and add your own. Now, in this onboarding, looks like by default you're just going to add their own. So I'm going to go ahead and save that, see what their step two is. Now this is your sender profile. Again, this is going to be against their own. And I'm just going to go ahead and put my information in here at TechSmart Boss. And we'll do the same TechSmart Boss for that. You can, you can update all these. But what I see them doing here is they're letting you set this stuff up. In your email marketing, you have to put a business address because of spam laws and things like that. So I'll go ahead and put my TechSmart Boss business address in here. Anyone from Herndon, leave a, con uh, a comment. Let me know if you're in the area. And uh, I'll just kind of uh, please click here to unsubscribe. I, you know, you can change all this stuff later. I'm just going to get through the, the profile here. All right, so now I've got my sender profile. It's nice that they take you through. These are stumbling blocks early in the um, process with Platformly. So it looks like they're just validating and making sure. They even do some checks here to make sure I've got my email straight and there's no blacklisting on me. And, and of course, there's not. All right, let's go ahead and confirm and save that. And uh, I've activated my, let's activate, continue. I think it actually sent me an email for me to, verify I got the email and click on it and we'll, we'll do that later and then project name so uh, I, I just use this with, with one project in my account the, the concept is if you did have multiple brands you could have those be separate projects in your account I'm just gonna make one for tech smart boss and, and keep it simple and you can see that you can have those custom sender profiles associated with each each project by default but on every individual email you can change that as well then the last step here, it looks like it's going to give me the opportunity to import my contacts, create my first form, get into APIs. I'm going to go ahead and skip that. Let's just take a look at the dashboard. And here we are. So pretty easy. And videos all throughout the way, so you can actually take the time to look at those videos. You'll see they keep you informed. This is a nice little widget that tells you what's going on. Let's go ahead and just skip the tips for now, because I'm going to walk you through and give you the high level based on what I've been using. So... Again, you've got a central dashboard. If you do have those sales reports and things hooked up into there, you could do some pretty cool stuff with the dashboard. You can also, you'll see from a template here, bring in things like, you know, social media things, uh, sales things, integrations, all, all kind of things in the dashboard. Uh, yeah, I don't use a dashboard as much, but you'll see I can select my project here, have that dashboard specific to that project. And then let's go through. The, the big thing is going to be your contacts. I really do like their, their their contact system there. 
Let's go ahead and skip the tips again and I'll add just a contact so you can see what that contact record looks like. In fact, I don't have to add it. It takes me there. And you'll see, let's dismiss the checklist there. You'll see that there's a lot of fields here. And what's really nice is custom fields. Really important for that marketing automation. The marketing automation is tied tightly in with this customer record in these custom fields. And you've got these widgets here to give you a quick view of all the emails that they've sent. If you've hooked up to purchasing, the activities, and you'll see the tabbed approach here. You can, again, see all the emails that they've received, what their stats are, lots of advanced segmentation and tagging. You've got both segments and tags here that can drive your automation. You can see what automations they're in and restart them, do a lot of cool things here, and then CRM type of things like notes and activities. And if you do hook up that purchasing, you've got the value there. So you can kind of see the robustness of the fields you have from a contact perspective and again i use zapier and hook in, in, in convertful and it loads up all these fields really perfectly for me then you've got the email section so any part of email marketing or automation is going to be sending out messages and uh, again they have a, a pretty nice way now i will say one thing that uh they don't do well and i'll be real frank with this is you know html pretty you know, formatted emails with an email templates. They do have the email builder in here. It's getting better. They also have a landing page builder. I just, I, I like just plain text emails. I just keep it simple. I just use this and type in it and use the bold and the bullets and the underline. And I just keep a very simple template with my emails. I think they pass through spam gateways easier and they're, they're just more you know authentic than a bunch of formatted html emails but you'll see here you can build your emails you've got the personalization tokens that you can use and all the custom fields you've got the ability to pick that sender profile that you want to send it out as and, and they've got all sorts of other cool features here once you save that email you can send it as a broadcast but what i do is i bring it into the automations and in the automations, you got a couple different ways you could do these automations. Let's go ahead and skip the tips again. I can do a simple automation, very simple, just straightforward. If this, then do that type of thing. Or I can go back here and do more of a visual automation, the drag and drop with the blocks and build flows and things like that. I'll just show you real quick the simple one. Let's do one from a template. They do have templates. I don't really use these, but you'll see out of the box, let's say demo follow-ups. Let's uh, I can preview it. And you'll see how is a demo. It's just a four, it looks like a four message drip here. Let's go ahead and load that in. And you'll see it'll give you something already to work with. What's going to be your entry trigger? Remember I mentioned those segments and tags? Look at all these entry triggers. So I, I really like this from a workflow automation perspective. And then I can go in here and customize my emails. You'll see they're using the plain text emails as well. And this is just a really straightforward uh, kind of drip campaign. But let's go back and look at the visual ones. And maybe they have a template from that. They do. And you'll see that uh, they just have the one. Let's go ahead and load that in. And you'll see that you can start to build a lot of conditional logic and a lot of loop back. And it's a very powerful visual automation thing. So I, I can say this is their strength. Now, they also have the opt-ins and the landing pages. Again, kind of like the email builder. This is a work in progress from my perspective. And I like to use other tools for my forms and my landing pages. And then they've got those reports. Of course, if you've hooked up the sales, uh, the, the, the payment processor, you've got some good sales uh, reports here. Email reports, unsubscribes, all your activity on that. And then this video is going a little bit long, so I'm going to go ahead and click quickly into this. You can see that in the setup is where I can create more projects. I can create more sender, sender profiles. Remember, we set those two up. I can also create more mailers. So this is where I can add my own email service versus that default one. You'll see here they give you the ability to select a lot of different providers, including custom. And that's really easy to set up and, and test and use. I really like that method. And then, of course, there's other things. And you remember those custom domains I talked about? You'll see here you can add your own custom domains, which, again, can be used for your tracking, your landing page, and your email um, links that, that go out. So you don't have to worry about uh, you know spam and, and, and catching and spam and things like that. Let's take a peek at integrations, and you'll see that, all the things we talked about active already, but if I were to look at 
you know, Zapier, there it is, Lead Bridge, Integromat, Web Hooks, you know, lots of things here. So you pretty much have uh, a lot of integrations that you can tap into. And again, I, I really love this Convert for One that they just came out with as well. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. Check it out. Um, if you're looking for an email, an advanced email marketing automation tool that gives you so much more that you can grow on, I think Platformly is an excellent choice for you to take a look at. And if you like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We put out one typically each week and leave a comment. Let us know what you think. And if you have any other products you'd like us to take a look at, you know, just reach out to us, David at TechSmartBoss.com or leave a comment on this video. Talk to you next time.